Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Stephanie. We are going to continue talking about the legends and lore of Chinese New Year. Okay,、mm. there are various stories, various traditions associated with Chinese New Year, which is today. Happy Chinese New Year, Happy everybody! Happy Chinese New Year. Uh, it's the first of the、uh, first month of the、uh, lunar calendar. Lunar calendar, yeah.、Uh, so, of course,、uh, you're all celebrating today. And、uh, of course, if you stayed up late last night playing cards or mahjong after your big feast, maybe you're getting up right now in time to listen to our program. And we're going to be talking some more about these legends associated with Chinese New Year. Yeah, you know them already, but you never know. You might run into a client from overseas, and they'll be asking you questions. Hey, tell me all about Chinese New Year. Well, if you listen to today's lesson, you will learn how to tell them all about it. So let's get to it, everybody. Let's read the entire contents of our lesson right now, one time. Nowadays, Chinese New Year is as much about celebrating a year of hard work as it is ushering in a prosperous new one. As a result, several things are done in the lead up to the holiday. Following the saying "out with the old, in with the new," families clean their homes to rid themselves of any bad luck from the previous year. They may also purchase new, often red clothing to wear as they enter the new year. On Chinese New Year's Eve, families gather for a reunion dinner where they enjoy an amazing selection of food. Fish, representative of prosperity, is always served but never finished. The leftovers indicate a surplus in the coming year. Dumplings, which stand for wealth, also make an appearance on the dinner table, along with tangyuan, sweet glutinous rice balls that represent family unity. After dinner, families exchange hongbao or red envelopes. Children receive hongbao from their parents and relatives, while adult children return the favor to their parents. The bills inside these beautifully decorated hongbao bring good luck to their recipients. It's also customary to stay up until midnight and light firecrackers. This practice, called shou sui. Is believed to drive away evil spirits and welcome the new year. Over the following week, families visit relatives, friends, and neighbors, bringing gifts and blessings to their loved ones. Finally, on the fifteenth day of the new year, the celebration culminates with a brilliant lantern festival. This February, as you prepare to celebrate, remember to ring in Chinese New Year, just as you hope your upcoming year will unfold. Full of prosperity and good fortune, with family and friends by your side. Okay, everybody, let's talk about the contents of today's lesson. Here we go. We're talking about the legends and lore of Chinese New Year. And nowadays, Chinese New Year is as much about celebrating a year of hard work as it is ushering in a prosperous new one. So this sentence basically tells us that for Chinese New Year, we're celebrating a year of hard work, and we're also ushering in a new year. So it's telling us that we're doing two things at the same time. It's as much about celebrating a year of hard work as it is. Ushering in a prosperous new one. So as much as as it is, that just means they they're about the same way. They're about to celebrate it in equal amounts here. So it is about celebrating the last year, and it's also about celebrating the new year. Okay, for another example that's a little different, I could say,、uh, my love for Taiwan is as much about loving their food as it is about loving the people. Okay, so, good example. You know, love both things. So it's a different way to write a sentence, different structure, and you always should be looking for different ways to write English sentences. So your so your compositions, your writing isn't boring. We like to、uh, write different kinds of sentences. Uh, so we're gonna move on here. If you usher in, you kind of welcome something in. We use it a lot when we talk about the new year, ushering in the new year, or the baby, you know, has ushered in a new, a new feeling in the family, you know, with its presence. So usher in.、Um, an usher is somebody who works in the theater. Um, either a movie theater or a, 
a theater where you go and see a play or a musical, and they they can take you to your seat. So it's like somebody showing you something, right? So ushering in. Um, usher in a prosperous. Prosperous, of course, is a great word. <laughs> it means you're successful, and typically means financially.、Um, but you can be successful in different ways. Here, it's mostly、uh, material ways, things that you own and buy, and that you can、uh, have enough money to feel wealthy. So, as a result, several things are done in the lead up to the holiday. A lead up to something, anything. It's just the time right before that holiday or right be- before that event occurs, you know. So the lead up to my favorite show tonight will be a basketball game, and once that's over, my show starts at eight. So a lead up to something is what happens before that following event. Right.、Uh, as an example, as a lead up to elections, there are always. Rallies for the、mm-hmm. candidates.、Yeah. They have people get together. They give speeches. Everybody cheers and waves flags. Those are activities that lead up to a holiday. But here, lead up with a hyphen there makes this a noun. So this is、uh, talking about things that are done in the lead up to the holiday or in the period of time before the holiday. Actually comes okay. So these are some preparations that you need to make. Following the saying, "Out with the old, in with the new," families clean their homes to rid themselves of any bad luck from the previous year. So we're following the saying, "Out with the old, in with the new." That's an English phrase here. I'm sure there's a Chinese equivalent one, but I can't really think of it offhand here. But we're following this saying. We're observing this saying. We're doing what it says. We're supposed to get. Get rid of old stuff and bring in new stuff. So what we do is we clean our homes and we get rid of bad luck.、Uh, here we're using the word "rid" as a verb to rid someone of something. I want to rid my home of all the junk. For example, I、yeah. want to throw everything out. And in this particular case, you could also say to get rid of the bad luck from the previous year. Say goodbye to that bad luck. Yeah, so like Tom said, you could also say families clean their homes to get rid of their bad luck from the previous year.、Uh, this is a more, I think, formal way to write the sentence. To rid oneself of something is a little harder than just to get rid of something for yourself. So we're getting rid of our bad luck. Anything that's old and damaged is a—it's a good time to just toss it and clean, clean, clean. I like that part of the year where I see、uh, the people who have businesses in my neighborhood all shutting down and cleaning. It's kind of fun. They may also purchase new, often red clothing to wear as they enter the new year. So you might want to make sure you have some red clothes. I don't ever buy any new red clothes. I have plenty. Because I like that color. I like that color before I moved to Taiwan. So if you purchase, it just means you buy something.、Uh, you can just really just switch those two words whenever you want to say that you want to buy something. You can use purchase instead. It's a little bit more formal, but we use it all the time in speech too. Yeah, I guess you don't have to absolutely have red clothing, just as long as you have new clothing. Oh, really? New is more important than red. Uh, yes, it does say you will purchase new, but it will be often、oh, red、true. clothing. Oh, that's true. Yeah, and yeah, I, I, you know, I like blue. That's my favorite color. Do you buy new clothes at Chinese New、uh, Year? Not really. I've got plenty of clothes. I'm kind of conservative. But just your daughter and your wife. Yeah, like... they probably do. Of course, we've got more clothing than we need <laughs> in the house. But of、uh, indeed, I'm you know I'm still wearing shirts that I bought. Ten years ago, but、uh, a lot of other people, of course, will buy new clothing items, and of course, these garments will oftentimes be red in、Ooh. color. Now, on Chinese New Year's Eve, families gather for a reunion dinner where they enjoy an amazing selection of food. So, of course, this would have happened last night on Chinese New Year's Eve. Families get together for a family reunion. It's a reunion dinner.、Mm. Uh, of course,、uh, people might live in different parts of the island, especially for families who are from the center and south, and they've got uh, kids and uh, uh, relatives who live up in the north. And they, of course, head down to Jai or Jianghua, Taichung, or whatever. But in any case.、Uh, On、uh, Chuxi, of course, on Chinese New Year's Eve, you're having a big feast here with a big selection of food, lots of dishes there, 
And of course, you're going to have fish as well. Fish, representative of prosperity, is always served but never finished. The leftovers indicate a surplus in the coming year. Now, oh, so you can't just eat the whole fish? Yeah, I never heard that, or I forgot about it.、Ah. I'm not quite sure, but I know they have fish because of that、uh, phrase, "fish every year." Nian nian yo yu. So I think that's why you、yeah. eat fish at、uh, your Chinese New Year's、uh, Eve feast. There, I don't like fish though. So is that bad? Oh, you better eat. It you or you're not going to have good luck in the next year. You <laughs>、okay. have to do it. You have no choice, <laughs> and it's always served. But of course, you never finish it, and、uh, of course, the leftovers will indicate a surplus in the coming year. Surplus just means you got something extra. Like、uh, of course, Japan has a trade surplus with the United States. I believe still China, of course, China has a huge、does. surplus with the United States. Deficit is the opposite there. So、mm-hmm. if you have fish, then you're going to have a surplus of money and fortune in the coming year. So dumplings, which stand for wealth, also make an appearance on the dinner table. I love your dumplings, guys. If something stands for something else, it means that particular thing represents an idea. Usually, we use the example of a red rose represents romantic love, or a dove, which is a type of bird, represents peace. Here, your dumplings represent or stand for wealth, which is awesome. They also make an appearance on the dinner table along with something called tangyuan, which is sweet, glutinous rice. Ice balls that represent family unity. I must confess, I'm not a big fan of tangyuan.、Um, it's a little bit too. Nom, 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 sticky. You don't like kind of、texture. sticky food. Like you don't like bananas either, right? Not a lot. It's the it's the texture I don't like. But、uh, glutinous is pr- glutinous rice. Those two words you're probably only going to see in Asia. I'd never、mm. seen the word before I came here. But、uh, it's that really sticky rice. Rice in the U.S. is. Is very dry. I don't like it anymore. I actually prefer the sticky rice, but、um, the tangyuan is a little bit sweet, and so they have these little balls, and those balls represent family unity, family coming together. It's beautiful. Indeed, you also have tangyuan at the、uh, winter solstice, which、uh, happened a couple of weeks ago, and of course tangyuan are very sweet, so you can't have them every day. And of course, you have the sticky rice balls as well, because hey, everybody's together and everybody's unified. Okay, that brings us to the end of the first part of our lesson for today. Let's take a break and listen now to our Chinese teacher. Hello, everyone. My name is Tina. 今天文章的第一段第一句写着 Nowadays, Chinese New Year is as much about celebrating a year of hard work as it is ushering in a prosperous new one. 这个句子呢，有一个句型结构，叫做 as much as， 就是如同怎么样，也是怎么样的。所以这个句子要翻译成为：现今呢，农历的新年，除了是迎接崭新繁荣的一年，也是呢，赞扬过去一年以来的辛勤工作。所以这样子的成分是一样多的，所以我们用 as much as。不过，我们要特别注意一下后面的动词 usher。usher 本来是有迎接的意思，所以我们常常说 usher in， 也就是呢，迎接某个事物的到来。而后面的形容词也很重要 ，prosperous 当做是繁荣的、兴盛的的意思。A prosperous city 指的就是一个繁荣的都市。后面的文章会看到它的名词 prosperity， 也就是有繁荣、兴盛的意思。第一段的第三个句子继续说 ，following the saying out with the old, in with the new, families clean their homes to rid themselves of any bad luck from the previous year. 那么呢，就遵循着这个除旧布新的俗语 ，out with the old。In with the new, 这样子的俗语呢，家家户户就会打扫房屋，来除去自己前一年的任何的 bad luck 厄运。动词 rid 本来就是有使免除或者是摆脱的意思，我们常常会搭配介系词 of。举例来说，我要这座城市摆脱它腐败的现象，你就可以说 I want to rid this city of corruption. 
第二段呢，来提到除夕夜的时候，大家吃团圆饭，叫做 a reunion dinner， 会有哪些菜肴呢？第二个句子提到 fish。Representative of prosperity is always served but never finished. The leftovers indicate a surplus in the coming year. 最重要的就是鱼，这道菜呢代表着就是昌盛的意思。Representative 形容词代表的，那么它常常被端上桌。我们在这里用 served V P P。表被动，但是不可以吃完哦，因为剩菜呢就会象征着来年的盈余。Surplus 当做名词，就是有过剩或者是剩余的意思。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Okay, let's continue with our lesson, and、uh, we'll keep on talking about Chinese New Year, which is today. Hope you're having a great celebration. So, of course, on Chuxi, the big、uh, feast takes、uh -huh. place. Everybody. Stuffs themselves silly with all that food, and of course, I know that some people stay up late playing cards or playing mahjong. We don't、uh, condone gambling here, but it is a tradition.、Uh, when my mother-in-law was still alive, of course, they played mahjong well into the evening hours. I love mahjong, but I don't gamble. I mean, we just kind of trade fake. Fake yeah, things, you, it you know, doesn't you have, have to, to be. For you don't money, have to gamble. You know? Yeah, but it's fun it to play. Could be for food or something like that or <laughs> whatever. But in any case, here、uh, we talked about some of the food that you eat on Chinese New Year's Eve. So after dinner, families exchange hongbao or red envelopes. That's the good part there. The red envelopes, which will have some money in them, and children receive hongbao from their parents. And from their relatives, which of course would be your cousins, maybe your I guess it would be the older relatives, aunts, your aunts uncles, uncles grandpa, grandparents, grandma. stuff like that.、Yeah. And the adult children return the favor to their parents. Okay, so that's returning the favor. You did that for me, so I'll do that for you. That's returning the favor. One hand washes the other. I'll scratch your back. You scratch mine. So once you have a job as an adult, then、mm -hmm. you start giving home bow to. Your parents, huh? Exactly. Excellent.、Uh, to help them, you know, in their retirement and stuff、mm -hmm. like that. And of course, the bills here inside these beautifully decorated hongbao bring good luck to their recipients. So bills here is just referring to the money, you know, thousand, yeah, thousand NT dollars, five hundred NT dollars, one hundred NT dollars. Those are bills, and these、uh, hongbao are decorated here.、Uh, the ones I saw aren't decorated; they're just plain red paper. I guess it depends on the family and what your tradition might be. But、uh, of course, the bills will bring good luck. To the recipient, that's the person who receives the hongbao, who receives all the money inside the hongbao. Yeah, so the hongbao bring good luck to their recipients. So that's kind of fun. A recipient is someone who receives something.、Uh, you'll often see that word sometimes when you're, I don't know, trying to write an address on a package that you want to send to somebody. Um, you might see that on a form, so it just means who is going to receive what you're sending, the recipient. Or sometimes we'll hear it in the news. They'll talk about, you know, this actor was the recipient of the Oscar this year for best actor. We'll, we'll use it that way too. So it's also customary, or part of the customs or social practices of a particular group or country、uh, to stay up until midnight. And light firecrackers. Kind of hard to sleep for me that night because there are a lot of people in my neighborhood lighting firecrackers. So, but you know, you get to sleep in the next day, so it's okay. This practice called show sway actually means stay up all night on New Year's Eve. If you look it up in a dictionary, and it's believed to drive away evil spirits and welcome the new year. So that's kind of fun. It's very similar to our New Year's Eve in the Western world, where you know the goal was as a kid to stay up until midnight, make all that noise. We would take pots and pans outside and bang them together, because firecrackers 
are illegal in my state where I grew up. You make lots of noise, and then like twelve ten, I would stay up for ten more minutes, and then I'd be asleep. So、mm. you're supposed to stay up late, light those firecrackers, and then sleep in the next day. Indeed, because everybody has the next day off, you might as well. But then, of course,、uh, of course, last year、uh, during Chinese New Year's Day, we took a bus to the mountains to look at cherry blossoms. Really? I can't remember where that was. These buses all left from the Taipei train station. There were all sorts of people going. You probably had to buy a ticket in advance. Ah,、huh? uh, yes,、yeah, certainly you had to make reservations. Although I think. The buses weren't all full, so hey, maybe we should have gone this year. But in、Poor、any case, poor bus here, drivers they have to work.、Oh. They do, but they probably get extra pay. At least、That's、I、true. hope they do. Yeah. But yes, indeed, it's customary. You could say it's traditional for people to stay up till midnight and light those firecrackers, which, of course, as you said, is called show sway. It will get rid of those evil spirits and welcome the new year. Now, over the following week. Families visit various places and various people here. Families、mm. visit relatives, friends, and neighbors, bringing gifts and blessings to their loved ones. Indeed,、uh, people do stop by and、uh, bring gifts, like、uh, I guess、uh, fruit boxes or whatever. Nice, yeah, that's popular, huh?、Uh, all the、uh, convenience stores sell these、uh, gift boxes that you can pick up and take to your relative's house when you're going to visit during the following week.、Mm-hmm. And of course,、uh, they're bringing gifts as well. As those blessings, finally on the fifteenth day of the new year, which is Yuan Xiaojie, of course, the celebration culminates with the brilliant lantern festival. So here we've got the verb to culminate.、Uh, as I said, it's a verb. It just means it reaches the highest point, and then that's where it basically ends. So yes, indeed, the Chinese New Year celebrations culminate with the Lantern Festival, which takes place 15 days after the first day. And of course, there are various activities involved with this. They usually have lanterns on display at various locations in Taiwan. So pretty. And、uh, of course, every year they announce a different place for them. I remember going down to、uh, the Hall of the Great Man、uh, to see the lanterns there. Where's But, that? Uh, I think that's the. I, I better. I, that's kind of politically sensitive. I better not say what, what it's actually、oh, called. Oh, I know where you're talking Freedom about. Freedom Plaza、uh, <laughs> down there. The Chiang Kai Shek Memorial, guys.、Uh, you can say <laughs> that. Yes, indeed. So yeah, you can go down there and check out lanterns most of the time. I bet that's pretty. When I lived up in Beitou, I'd go over to Guandu Temple. They were always have.、Uh, oh, nice.、Uh, lanterns on display there,、mm. and lots of kids make them as well. So it's actually quite special. It's a wonderful time to check out those lanterns. And of course,、uh, that's what happens on Yuan Xiaojie, and it kind of ends the Chinese New Year's holiday, and then everybody's back to work. And this February, as you prepare to celebrate, of course, you've already been preparing this year, but maybe next year, as you think about it, you might want to remember to ring in Chinese New Year, just as you hope your upcoming year will unfold. So, if you want it to be happy and go well, you need to prepare in advance. To ring in the new year is just a phrase we use to talk about when the old year ends and the new year begins. Whether it's the lunar calendar or the Western calendar, it doesn't matter. We use that phrase to ring in the new year. When you talk about a year unfolding, it just means how that year proceeds, how well it goes, and you want things to go well and be full of prosperity and good fortune. And to have your family and friends by your side, so to really have a great Chinese New Year, you need to prepare in advance. If you wait too long, oh, you'll be rushed. You won't enjoy it as well.、Uh, maybe you won't have the gifts you need to have for friends and family. So you got to get your act together, guys, and get prepared. Indeed, but of course,、uh, since the holiday is already upon us, if you haven't made those preparations, if you haven't made those preparations by now, yes, Libuji, it's too late. So I guess you'll have another chance next year. But most people remember. I don't yeah, really hear of people who haven't prepared properly. These preparations always manage to get made, and of course, it's、yeah. always fun to go down to Dihua Jie and see people. Oh, I love that street. It's fun. Oh yes,、yeah. it's very exciting, and of course, this is an exciting time. Time of the year, so here it says you're ring- ringing in the Chinese New Year. I guess in the past people used bells. They did, yeah, bells in churches. Bells in churches, right? I guess they don't really have temple bells here. Ringing in the New Year, but、uh, that's the phrase we use to ring in the New Year to welcome the New Year. 
and it will unfold. The new upcoming year will unfold. It will present itself to you, full of prosperity and good fortune, with family and friends. By your side. So yes, indeed, we wish you the best in this new year. May everybody get rich. Okay, that brings us to the end of our explanation for today. Here comes our Chinese teacher. 接着我们来看到第三段的第一个句子 After dinner, families exchange home bao or red envelopes. Children receive home bao from their parents and relatives, while adult children return the favor to their parents. 当然，过年最重要的就是要收红包喽。那么，小孩子会从他的父母或者是 relatives 亲戚手中收到红包。但是，如果你成年的话，你就要 return the favor， 你就要呢来包红包给父母，来回报他们的恩情。Favor 这个字就是指善意的行为或者是恩惠的意思。如果某人帮了你一个大忙，你就可以说 "You did me a great favor." 最后一段过年呢，其实长达十五天。到了第十五天，就是大家所喜欢的元宵节。最后一段的第二个句子提到。Finally, on the fifteenth day of the new year, the celebration culminates with a brilliant lantern festival. 在这里提到的 lantern festival 就是元宵节，是在新年的第十五天。而这里的 culminate 指的就是达到最高点的意思。如果说 the battle culminated in total victory. 指的就是呢，这场战争呢，它是以大获全胜来结束，达到最高点。下一句提到 ，This February, as you prepare to celebrate, remember to ring in Chinese New Year, just as you hope your upcoming year will unfold, full of prosperity and good fortune, with family and friends by your side. 在这里呢，提到说，今年的二月准备要庆祝的同时，也要记得迎接农历新年的到来哦。这里的 ring in， 也就是有宣布来临的意思，因为你希望呢，在即将到来的这一年的发展是充满着繁荣跟好运。Unfold 则是有开展出来的意思，或也有显露、展现，像是 a beautiful view on。Folded before us, 指的就是我们面前展现出一派美丽的景色。所以祝你新的一年有很多的 prosperity and good fortune， 充满着繁荣跟好运。OK， 以上就是今天的课文讲解。谢谢收听。That's it for today, everybody. Thank you for joining us, and Happy Chinese New Year, everybody. From all of us here at English Digest, I'm Tom. I'm Stephanie. Happy New Happy Year. New Year. Thank、you